In a society where the government controlled everything, even the thoughts of the citizens, rebellion was seen as an unthinkable crime. But for one young woman, the call to challenge the oppressive regime was too strong to ignore. Evelyn had always felt suffocated by the restrictions imposed by the government. Her every move was monitored, her every word scrutinized for any hint of dissent. She knew that the consequences of questioning the status quo were dire, imprisonment, torture, or worse. But the gnawing feeling of injustice persisted, growing stronger with each passing day. It was then that she stumbled upon a group of people who shared her beliefs, a shadowy network of rebels who had managed to escape the government's grasp. They called themselves the resistance and their goal was clear, to overthrow the tyrannical government and reclaim their freedom. Evelyn was both exhilarated and terrified at the prospect of joining their ranks. Could she really risk everything to join a group of strangers to fight against a power that seemed invincible? Even as she hesitated, Evelyn couldn't deny the thrill of rebellion that coursed through her veins. The other members of the resistance had faced the same fears and doubts and they welcomed her with open arms. As she grew more involved with the group, Evelyn learned of the incredible lengths they went to in order to maintain their independence. They had built an intricate network of secret tunnels and safe houses and had even managed to secure access to weapons and supplies. But the road to overthrowing the government would not be easy. The resistance was constantly harassed and hunted by the government's agents and each meeting or mission was a gamble with their lives. Evelyn soon discovered that, even within the resistance, there were differing opinions on the best course of action. Some believed in a more aggressive approach, striking out against government installations and agents whenever possible, while others favoured a more cautious approach, biding their time and waiting for the right moment to strike. Despite the disagreements, the group remained united in their determination to bring the government down. Evelyn found herself becoming increasingly involved, and soon she was one of the most trusted members of the resistance. The government, of course, remained oblivious to their machinations. The people of the city were kept in a state of constant fear, and any hint of rebellion or dissent was swiftly crushed. Evelyn couldn't help but wonder how different things would be if everyone knew the truth, if they knew that there were others out there who were fighting for their freedom. But the risk of exposure was too great and the resistance remained hidden in the shadows. As the group grew stronger, Evelyn struggled with her own conscience. She had always been taught to obey the rules, to never question the government's authority. But the more she saw of the corrupt and oppressive system, the more she realized that there was nothing noble or just about blindly following the rules. The day finally came when the resistance launched a coordinated attack against the government's headquarters. The city was thrown into chaos as rebels rushed the building, guns blazing. Evelyn was there in the thick of it all, feeling both terrified and exhilarated as she fought alongside her fellow rebels. The government retaliated with swift and brutal force, and many of the resistance's members were killed or captured. Evelyn was among the lucky few who managed to escape, but she knew that there would be consequences for what they had done. And yet, even as she fled through the city, Evelyn felt a glimmer of hope. The people were no longer living in ignorance. They knew now that there were others who dared to defy the government and that perhaps there was a chance for change. Even as she watched the city burn, Evelyn knew that the fight for freedom was far from over. But she also knew that she would never give up the struggle, no matter the cost. For in a world of oppression and tyranny, there could be no greater duty than to fight for the right to be free.